What's good, people? CJ Williams tapping in. Two platinum albums, one that went gold, a number one single on Billboard 200, a career that spans over three decades, and even a former Guinness Book of World Records title. All of these accomplishments have been achieved by the rapper we know and love as Twister. With his signature rapid fire raps, the Chicago native is at the very least an early innovator of the accelerated double time flow, if not the father of it. Covering Twister has been a long time request from our fans because his catalog of 10 studio albums has earned him a rabbit following who believe his output is underrated in hip-hop media. So today, prepare for an adrenaline rush because we're diving head first, kamikaze style, into Twister's body of work from worst to first. Number 10, Running Off at the Mouth. Twister's 91 introduction, Running Off at the Mouth, exists somewhere in the spectrum between crafty and cringe. For promotion before release, he dropped the swift single Mr. Tongue Twister and earned the title of fastest rapper in the world from the Guinness Book, both in 92. The album finally dropped on June 9th of that year. So what were the results? Yeah, it was raw but rough. Yes, Twister at only 18 had mastered most of the essentials of being a talented rapper. Great flow as exhibited on the opener Rat-a-Tat-Tat, -tat, storytelling ability on the reminiscent coming of age back to school, great beat selection like on Razzmatazz slash Jazzmatazz, and hook making for example on Snap Happy. However, he lacked what would make him a great rapper later something unique to say. Throughout the LP, he drops pro-black Islamic messaging like X-Clan, braggadocious bars like Big Daddy Kane, and puts style over substance as any novice MC would. The aforementioned single, the title track and songs like No Peace Sign, None of Y'all Can Hang, and Say What substantiate these claims. Now to be fair, only one teen rapper in history dropped a classic, you can check out our Nas list here, and even he was still coming into his own there. Nevertheless, Running Off at the Mouth sold 100,000 copies, considered a flop back then, and was notable for two things, helping launch one of the seminal rap labels of the 90s and being a breakthrough moment for Chicago hip hop. Number nine, Crook County. The gap in between Twister's first and last LP is a quarter century, an eon in rap years. Through the changing tides of trends and styles that have come and gone, it's a testament to Twister's talent that he has withstood the test of time. 2017's Crook County, a play on words of Cook County where Chicago rests, was his third indie release on his label Get Money Gang and his 10th overall LP. At 43 years old upon release, his tongue is still sharp and enough to chop like a helicopter. Unlike many OGs, his signature voice hasn't deteriorated over time and he still has that edge that is usually lost to age. With 9 of the 13 tracks having features from mostly younger underground artists from the go and production handled by similar beat makers, this album is is for those who wish to hear Twister over contemporary trap beats with the young bloods. Standout songs like these are the smooth yet menacing Mortuary featuring Vic Spencer, the Smoker's Anthem Happy Days, and the soulful Just In Case featuring the boy Illinois, all produced by relative unknown Zen Zan beats. On all of the tracks mentioned, Twister raps with ferocity. However, Crook County lacks depth outside of the topics of materialism, murder, and mayhem mostly. An exception to this would be Hollywood. Over a haunting beat, Twister spits about how he struggled to get to the top, so now homies from around the way say that he thinks they're better than them. It's more mature than the other songs that clog the track list where Twister sounds like he's trying to prove he's still down. Crook County is for those who want boilerplate trap music from a lyricist or for big fans of Twister who just can't get enough. However, we'd have been served better if Twist showed more growth in his topics since he's seen so much come and go. Number eight, Adrenaline Rush 2007. After quick time with Slime on the Drink Champs podcast, Nori asked Twister about each album in his catalog. When Adrenaline Rush 2007 was mentioned, Twister himself admitted that the title doesn't match the music and he would change the name if he could do it all again. He said that he was still able to rap his ass off but was in a shitty space creatively. It is validating to know that the artist sees how incongruous the sequel is to the original's intensity and conciseness because we would agree. We wouldn't go as far as to say that this CD is a weed plate because there are flashes of greatness that evoke the same feeling of the 97 Adrenaline Rush. Firstly, the skits that loosely tell a crime narrative throughout the album like the first are back. Secondly, many of the tracks are victorious in capturing that adrenaline rush magic like charge i ain't that nigga no pistols featuring the duo speed not mobsters and creep fast which has a stellar contribution from t-pain all of these tracks were produced by chicago underground beat maker toxic and they incorporate semi-automatic speed raps with gangster lyrics over thumping high intensity beats yet for every one of those tracks that encapsulates the essence of twist's greatness 
we get records that are glaring examples of him trying to reach mass appeal. If you listen closely, you can hear the Atlantic Records A&R whispering in Twister's ear to make a pop hit on the Jazzy Faye and CeeLo assisted Say Say, the boredom in Pharrell's voice on the unoriginal Give It Up, and the mixtape Wheezy phoning in his 20th lean induced verse of that night on Whip Game Proper. The only collaboration made for radio that sounds organic is the melodic reunion of Kells and Twister on Love Rehab, though we could have done without Twister singing. One of the saving graces on this album comes toward the end with the Bone Thugs and Harmony collab Ain't No Ho produced by Cuzzo. Their collaboration lives up to all expectation and is one of the most replayable songs on here, though a slot save for Busy would have been the cherry on top. Adrenaline Rush 2007 is a step above his debut and Crook County because there are a handful of songs here that would have been included in a Twister Best Of compilation, but earns its number eight spot for its over-reliance on big name features to cross over and lack of cohesion. Number seven, The Perfect Storm. Trackstar and Twister have chemistry together like Nas and Hit Boy or YG and Mustard. When they're locked in the studio together, nine times out of 10, it's gonna win. Well, maybe we need to adjust those stats after running back 2010 Perfect Storm again and again. Perfect Storm has the most amount of Trackster beats on a Twister project since 97's Adrenaline Rush. Seven tracks out of 11 has his touch. His signature style of synth heavy beats with dark melodies and syncopated rhythms is evident on the strong opener darkness. Along with rapper Direct, Twister has the perfect cinematic backdrop to spit like a man possessed. Twister comes hard on every intro to his albums, but knowing that this is a mostly Trackster production, the expectations are different. Then comes Up to Speed, another track that bangs. While Tight Mike made the grandiose beat here, we're still off to a good start as Twister flexes his lyricism and his chopping ability at full capacity. Okay, we're on a roll. After that, Twister, Trackster, and America's premier Pyru, Chris Brown, join forces on Make a Movie. It's a great R&B slash rap record that's meant for the airwaves and the bedroom. A song style format Twister and Trackster mastered with previous hits Get It Wet and Wetter. And herein lies the problem. Too much of this album sounds like Twister and Trackster trying to repackage the past product. If if you're really into Twister songs for the ladies, then you'll find a lot to cherish on this album because he services that sector several times. 2012 featuring singer Tia London about making love to the world ends, Sweating featuring crooner Scotty Music about making love till you perspire, or Call the Police featuring Mr. Indoor Outdoor Pool Ray J about making love until the cops come are records that you can put on to get your grind on. That's not even counting the bonus tracks. Give It To Me, Go, Pussy Whip, Bad Girl featuring Lloyd, and Panties Off are here as well. Listen to In A Vacuum, many of these are dope, notably Hating You featuring Grits and Panties Off. But here at CT, we evaluate albums in totality, and this body of work has an excessive amount of serenades. This album is a step above Adrenaline Rush 2007 because there are quite a lot of songs that are engaging on their own and sound authentically Twister. However, it goes overboard delivering the rap slash R&B records that were successful in the past instead of creating something new organically. Number six, Kamikaze. Now, before you cut the episode off, let us explain. The word Kamikaze is Japanese for divine wind. Originally, it referred to an elite class of Japanese fighter pilots during World War II two who flew suicide missions into American naval pilots in the Pacific theater. The reasoning behind the deadly tactic is rooted in Japanese samurai culture, which teaches that death is more honorable than defeat. Now the word means to dive headfirst into something with reckless abandon at full force to succeed. This makes it a fitting title for Twist's fourth album because that's exactly what he does here. After 97's reinvention on Adrenaline Rush, Twister went back underground and released compilations and collaboration projects independently. This put him into conflict with Trackster's label creator's way, which said he was violating their contract. Twister said in his Drink Champs interview that he has, quote, years of his rap career shaved off due to legal drama. He would get his chance to break through again after settling the issue in 01. He then inked a new deal with Atlantic and linked up with the college dropout Kanye West. We've covered before about how Slow Jams came about on our episode on Jamie Foxx. You can check that out here. While Twister was working on his fourth album in 03, Slow Jams was released as the first single for his album and Kanye's second single from College Dropout. It goes to number one on Billboard 200, making Twister and Kanye simultaneously the first Chicago MCs with the number one song in the country. It set Twister up in a major way for Kamikaze to explode. Sensing that this was his moment, he goes for gusto trying to cover all bases. The album delivers tremendous performances from Twister on every verse, a variation of producers who bring different sounds and elements that complement Twister's electricity and features from other artists who bring their distinctiveness. There are excellent songs on here that 
still sound great despite time and trends passing. The triumphant and soulful Get At Me produced by Toxic Bangs. Of course, all three Pink Polo era Kanye records are magnificent. Slow Jams, Overnight Celebrity, and the Mafioso storytelling track One Last Time. On top of that, the softer R&B records meant for radio still resonate, those being both versions of So Sexy featuring and produced by the most famous singer at Butner Federal Prison. However, similar to the 19% hit rate of Kamikaze Pilots, there are some misses. But Donkey Donk is a jazzy fizzle product shizzle that sounds silly now even if it bounced then. Higher featuring Ludacris and Like a 24 featuring T.I. are as fresh as year old milk. Plus, both versions of the song Hope, famous for being played in the film Coach Carter, are disingenuously squeaky clean cuts, even though we prefer the Faith Evans take over CeeLo's. Sorry if we just dissed any song you nostalgically cherish, but music has to mean more than memories. Many of the records that have not held up well are overshadowed by fan favorite Kill Us All. Rapping like he's trying to verbalize a jihadi's last motives and moments, this song will make your hair stand up on end as Twister demolishes this high octane instrumental from Chicago's Toxic. Kamikaze debuted at number one not only on the rap charts, but on the pop charts, sold a million copies, and made Twister a household name in the early 2000s. It earns the number five place because nostalgia can't save some of the poorly aged tracks from killing us all. Before we get to the top five albums on our list, we can't speed through this without mentioning Twister's terrific track record as a featured artist. He's got standout verses on Do or Die Still Poe Pimpin and Do You, Puffy's Is This The End, Jay-Z's Is That Your Chick, The Slept On Like A Pimp remix from David Banner, and Trick Daddy's Let's Go. If we had to pick the best of these features, we have to ride with Do or Die's breakout single 1996 Poe Pimp. Flowing for 24 bars over the rhythm of the hi-hat, Twister spits a verse so phenomenal it pushed the single and album picture this to cult classic status, a go plaque and resurrected his own career after briefly fading into obscurity. But that's our take. Which do you think is the best feature he's done? Number five, category F5. When Twister gets into his Chicago bag, rapping like an effortless veteran with the talent he possessed as a kid trying to come out of K-Town, he's nearly untouchable. Twister has spoken about getting day jobs in between dropping albums. Now he's a certified firearms instructor, but on here it sounds as if he went back into the trenches after Adrenaline Rush 2007 flopped. Category F5, the most powerful type of tornado, was the first independent album on Twister's label in conjunction with Capitol Records, and listening to it feels like you're hearing a worldly talented rapper making the transition out of the trap by investing all that dope money in a rap. There's just something so needless yet endearing when you hear a multi-platinum rapper say, if I gotta feed my family, I'ma sacrifice my body, that you'd almost forget that this is Twister if not for the last line, you already know I be going kamikaze. This line comes from Wanna See Him Bust featuring Liffy Strokes with an airy beat from the terrific producer Toxic and It Slides. Those hint in the lyrics to the hustlers with the hunger for more on songs Hustler and I Got People, as well as the aforementioned ones make this album have a certain grit. There's an edge and authentic roughness to category F5 from the mix, to the beats, to the features that make it engaging when you play it front to back, including those bonus tracks. You're surprised when Boosie's high-pitched voice comes on the weed song, Fire. You're pulled into the sentimental stories weaved by Twister on Talk To Me. You hate to love Twist and R. Kelly linking up again on the sauntering yellow light. Then you're enthralled by the guilty pleasure that is Walking On Ice featuring the fat Gucci man and OJ the Juice Man. Wetter with Erica Siobhan is so good even Beyonce had to cuff it. Now sure, Billionaire with Busta Rhymes sounds like a worse version of A-Rap Money, but doesn't Yo Body with Do or Die capture that magic that their best collaborations with Twista have? Maybe the Akon assisted on top or the birthday song isn't your taste, but you can't front on Twista dominating a Timberland beat on Jump Off or the perfect reunion of Twista and Kanye on All Right. This might be a controversial pick to place category F5 in the top five, but Twista's sly smile when this album was brought up on Drink Champs shows that he knew his ode to We Can't Live Without You and the insane gangster lyricism on clapping would one day be appreciated by real heads who researched his catalog. That day has come and Category F5 has rightfully earned a number five slot on this list. Number four, Dark Horse. If you're looking for the Twister album that evokes the dark feeling of his underground resurrection album, but with more modern production, this is the one. Opening with the title track, Dark Horse, Twister tears it up, rapping like 
he's the overachiever who's forever the underdog, getting omitted from GOAT conversations. The bitterness fuels the fire for most of the album's many highlights. Powerful performances are plenty here, notably on the mafioso I Am Such a Mobster, the demonically possessed Devil's Angel, which is kill us all on steroids, the cosmic beast, where Twister takes his lyrical ability to another galaxy, and the slaps for the traps, one more jug, where Twister whips that crack on the track. If you're into the heavy metal equivalent of hip hop, where MCs rip it on the mic as hard, loud, and fast as possible, you will absolutely love the high intensity crisis featuring Kansas City legend Tech 9. Both mainstays of the Midwest go bonkers trying to outdo each other, chopping at velocities that break the sound barrier. It's astounding and we love it, but we also understand that this is an acquired taste. Others that fall into this vein are the aforementioned I'm Such a Mobster, Devil's Angel, and Beast. It's music made to astound other high caliber rappers or hardcore rap fans. Play these at the wrong place or time, and Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia will magically appear and say stop scaring the hoes. Dark Horse reached number 40 on Billboard 200 and didn't sell that much, most likely due to it being an indie release that didn't get much promo. That's a shame because it contains a lot of Twister returning to the darkness recesses of his style, attacking the mic without inhibition. Number 3, The Day After. 21 months after releasing his breakthrough album Kamikaze, Twister quickly followed up with The Day After, October 2005. The fifth album in his collection was highly acclaimed by critics at the time. On the opening song that shares the name of the album, Twister raps about surviving a deadly car crash that ejected everyone from his tour van and took the life of his bodyguard. Selena Johnson from Kanye's All Falls Down croons powerful affirmations while Twister tears through the symphonic beat provided by Toxic. He takes credit for five of the 15 tracks on the standard version of The Day After, and each track showcases the chemistry he has with Twister because they're the best records here. The high octane bravado on Check That Ho, the pimp tight melodic chopping on Chocolate Fees and Red Bones featuring Johnny P, the battle of the sexes with Notorious K.I.M. on Do Wrong, and the murder music that's heartbeat are all records where Toxic and Twister make magic. Honestly, if it weren't for Adrenaline Rush, Toxic might be the best producer for Twister's style when you look at the songs they've done together. But we digress. The Neptunes provide two fire records, those being the romantic tease When I Get Home, where Jamie Foxx reunites with Twister, and the motivational lavish where Pharrell drops 24 bars trying to chop like Twister as they both tell us that the sky is the limit. Most tracks here sound meaningful and unforced, especially the deep cuts like the semi-chopped and screwed groove holding down the game and had to call featuring no limit rapper fiend under the alias sleepy eye jones while there's a lot to love about the day after some of the tracks simply don't fit in the sequence of the album such as the horrendous hit the floor featuring mr 305 produced by mr collie park where pit bulls bars bore and twister tries his best to make this interesting another one that doesn't fit is i'm out here featuring juvenile and the speed knob mobsters which just lands as a bland street anthem these few missteps are forgivable because most of this gold selling album is dope. It was more than worthy of peaking at number 2 on Billboard 200 and frankly should be platinum by now. It earns the edge of the top 3 because a few records do sound a bit dated and we shouldn't have been deprived of another backpack era Kanye collaboration right after the success of Slow Jams. Number 2, Resurrection. After Twister's dismal sales and cold reception to his 91 debut, he was dropped from Loud Records. The then 19 year old dejectedly returned to K-Town Chicago. Rumor has it he worked as a barber and a security guard to support himself while he went back to the drawing board on his rap dreams. To then literally add insult to injury, the notoriety Twister gained for his fast rap style earned him the ire of another MC known for fast rapping, Trench from the group Naughty by Nature. On their 1993 album, Trench takes shots at Twister on the song Hood Comes First, as well as on the track Sleeping on Jersey, with the bar you could tongue Twister ass back to Chicago. Imagine being a young man who was just rejected by the industry and hip hop fans by and large, while the guys making hip hop hooray are on TV dissing you all over their platinum selling album. That would be enough to squash the hopes of most MCs, but not Twister. Embodying the grit and spirit that comprises everything great about hip hop, he goes the independent route with the finite resources he has along with his day ones to rise from the dead with Resurrection in 94. Entirely produced by the legendary Trackster, along with his day one rap partners the Speed Knob Mobsters making sporadic ad libs and features, Twister raps at a slower speed over hauntingly dark, bass heavy boom bap beats with pure venom. He reveals here that his style was not all flair because when the raps aren't rapid, you realize that he's a wildly witty lyricist. On the title track that opens the album, Twitter spits with veracity about being left for dead by disbelievers who counted him out while throwing some light jabs at Tretch. 
Then after that comes the Suicide Remix, a hard body head nodder that's a full-fledged flailing of Tretch with F-bombs aimed at Naughty by Nature. Animosity Kills, Reenact with a Mic, Return, Dirt on the Download, and Shadowboxing are all hardcore, raw, pure hip-hop records that you instantly love because they feel so familiar yet so fresh with their stripped down instrumentals and Twister's ability to make rewindable verses. However, the standout record is Street Paranoia, painting a picture of a blighted, dingy, dangerous Chicago where gangsters, guns, and grime own the streets. Twister raps about the mental anguish this type of society wrecks on the mind of the young black male. It's one of Twister's most slept on records. Just like this album, which only had a release in 94 in Chicago due to him being an independent artist and another Chicago in common, releasing an album titled Resurrection only two weeks prior. Some detractors will argue this album doesn't deserve the number two slot because it's a boom bap rap album from the era when the style was the norm. Yes, we agree with that description, but we are not arguing that a great album has to reinvent the wheel to be one of an artist's best. We are arguing that this album is enjoyable because it hits most if not all of the marks of what makes hip hop enjoyable. Great beats, masterful rapping, and captivating subject matter. Plus, the story behind this record is inspirational. When the world counted Twister out, left him for dead, dissed him, and all arrows pointed to him being another statistic, he grabbed the reins of his destiny, made something out of nothing, and fought back. If that's not hip hop, then what do you call that? Number one, adrenaline rush. Very few rappers dominate a beat so well that it's almost blasphemous for anyone else to rap over it, and it becomes synonymous with their name. You know Hove is about to spit that Wonder Rhymer shit as soon as you hear a distorted Nas sample from World Is Yours repeat presidents to represent me. Just as well, you know when you hear these six guitar notes? <laughs> that Twister is about to jump over the edge. Like watching Scarface getting shot up on the ledge, Adrenaline Rush is a semi-cinematic experience that is as high intensity as it is enthralling. Released in 97, three years after Resurrection and five years removed from his debut, Twister re-embraces his unique style, now in an era where the double time flow is no longer stigmatized with more maturity under his belt, fully in his bag and when the instrumental styles have finally caught up to his pace. Throughout Adrenaline Rush, Twister puts on a clinic on how to double time rap while simultaneously making memorable music. The cogency of this album is held together by the skits that loosely tell the narrative of a murder and its ripple effects on the K-Town community, weaving together the songs that feel like they're bringing to life the great Iceberg Slim or Donald Goins novels. The pimps, working girls, drug dealers, hitters, and regular Joes feel like they're all represented and speak through the album. And most importantly, the rapping is phenomenal. On Adrenaline Rush, Death Before Dishonor, Overdose, and Unsolved Mystery, Twister blacks out like an eclipse with each song enlivened by their up-tempo, layered beats, but also by the pockets Twister delivers in them. On It Feels So Good, he puts a shy town twist on Ice Cube's Today Was A Good Day, which vividly paints a pic of what his life is like while flowing as cold as the hawk in a Chicago winter. Both versions of Emotions are R&B records that are pimp tight yet ready for radio, and of course, Get It Wet with Finn Fatale, Miss Kane is the ultimate panty dropper. The song on Adrenaline Rush that'll turn an atheist into a believer is Corrupt World. This uncharacteristically introspective record deals with the nihilism that affects the minds of those who see lives lost regularly. This is Twister's Never Seen a Man Cry, and shows that he's more than an MC who can make words sound good, but has something meaningful to say. When Adrenaline Rush was released, it was a sleeper hit. It peaked at number 77 on Billboard 200, and the second single Get It Wet only reached number 96. With very little radio or music video play though, the record went gold in 97. A few years later when he had his second breakthrough into the mainstream, people became more interested in his back catalog. What they found was Adrenaline Rush. After 22 years in 2019, Adrenaline Rush finally got the commercial certification that matched his street status, a platinum plaque. Adrenaline Rush undoubtedly deserves the top spot because not only is it an excellent rap album, but it shows that Twister exemplifies that set backs are only setups for a major comeback. Hey, if you enjoyed this list, you'll definitely dig the ranking we did on a group of super swift spitters, bone thugs, and harmony. Check that out along with our Midwest Swang playlist for other artists that don't hail from the coast. It's your man CJ Williams for Coachless Theory. It's been real. Peace.